Hi, this week we're going to talk about what's the best sterilization method for you to use. So for those of you that are not familiar with sterilization validation or the sterilization methods, there are multiple sterilization methods that you can use to make sure your product meets the FDA's requirements for a sterile product. If it's labeled as sterile, it has to have a sterility assurance level of 10 to the minus 6. And here are your choices. In the FDA um, e-star template for a 510K or Genovo, they give you first choice, steam sterilization. So this is moist heat. You're going to steam it, and that will sterilize the product. Number two, ethylene oxide. It's a toxic gas, but it breaks down into other products, and it off-gasses over time, um, usually days and um, sometimes hours. But once it's off gas, then it's usually a safe sterile product. Number three, radiation. Typical radiation types are gamma sterilization um, and E-beam sterilization. Both of those are used for food products as well as medical devices, very common. Dry heat sterilization. This is used a lot by the pharmaceutical industry to sterilize glass vials before they fill them with an aseptic filler. Aseptic means in a sterile way so you're not contaminating it, but you're not sterilizing it after the fact. You're sterilizing the components ahead of time, usually filter sterilizing whatever you're going to fill with, and then you put the sterile cap on, all usually done by a robot. The next thing on the list is hydrogen peroxide. Now this is one of the more non-traditional methods of sterilization. It's very similar to ethylene oxide. It uses an um, um, something that has a double O link that's very reactive and tends to kill anything organic. Um, so they inject this hydrogen peroxide into the chamber and it's a vacuumed chamber. So there's nothing in there. It's a, a very small trace amount of air and then, or steam. And then you inject that in there and it sterilizes the product. And it's how much hydrogen peroxide do you have to use and how long do you have to expose it? So that's very similar to steam, but it, and very similar to, ethylene oxide, but it uses hydrogen peroxide. The next method is ozone. Now, this is definitely a non-traditional method, but ozone works very similar to uh, ethylene oxide and hydrogen peroxide with these um, OO linkages, uh, double oxygen link in it. It's very reactive and kills anything organic. Um, the next method is flexible bag systems. Anderson Scientific developed an EO bag system where instead of a very large metal chamber, you have a, a plastic bag. You inject the hydrogen peroxide into the bag in a sm from a small ampule. And uh, instead of exposing it to a certain length of time, um, it's a certain amount of sterilin that goes in the bag. And then the last choice is novel methods. So there's always new methods being developed. There are some that have been around quite some time, sometimes decades. Um, right back from the beginning when they were first building autoclaves, there was a method called parasitic acid that was being used. That is still in use today. There are standards for parasitic acid, but it's still considered a non-traditional or novel method. So in an article that we published, a, a blog post on our website, medicaldevicesacademy.com, on Tuesday, I went through all these options and explained the pluses and minuses of each one. I gave you lots of hyperlinks to all the different um, standards that you can use, but it still doesn't tell you how to how to select. So we tried to talk a little bit in the blog about how to select, but in general, if, if you have no idea which one you should pick, the most important thing is, are you even going to be sterilizing the product yourself or is the customer going to sterilize it? A lot of times with orthopedic implants that are they're metal plates and screws, a lot of times what will happen is the doctor or nurse will, or the circulating nurse, whoever it is working in the OR, will put the uh, implants in the instruments in a tray with holes in it. They'll wrap the tray, and then it goes in an autoclave where they steam sterilize it. That's the most common method. So if you're going to make those types of products where the customer, the end user, sterilizes the product, then you probably ought to be thinking about steam. An alternative to that is hydrogen peroxide. That's the gas plasma, VHP, or other acronyms or names for it. But hydrogen peroxide sterilization chambers are relatively safe for the environment. 
and safe for the users that are operating the equipment. So they allow us to use, and I got all kinds of things popping up on my screen here. Sorry about that. Um, we have um, lots of hospitals that have purchased these systems to sterilize their products. So that could be a great way to do your sterilization. Um, if, if the customer is doing the sterilization, if you're going to do the sterilization, a lot of times the decision is based on the materials that you choose. Um, another consideration is the cost of the sterilization. Ethylene oxide in general, doing large pallet chambers where you have one, two, three, four, five, maybe even up to 14 different pallets of product tend to be cheaper than doing a small volume of product at a time, just as economies of scale. So ethylene oxide tends to be a cheaper process. The problem with ethylene oxide is it's toxic. It's an environmental hazard. Um, so we need to make sure it off gases, but also there's a limitation in how many facilities out there can do this. So if you only have certain facilities that can do ethylene oxide sterilization, what are we gonna do about that? Well, if you go to um, a contract um, ethylene oxide sterilizer and they can fit you in and they can give you a contract, you may be fine, but you may find it's hard to get those companies to fit you in. They may already be at maximum capacity and the whole entire industry is trying to find alternatives to ethylene oxide sterilization. In addition, the initial setup costs of validating ethylene oxide sterilization are fairly expensive. You have to do um, a fractional cycle, sometimes two fractional cycles, three half cycles, and three full cycles to complete the entire process. And the manufacturer that's doing the contract sterilization, they have to do validation of the equipment. That's an IQ. They're gonna have to do dose, um, not dose, but uh, temperature mapping of the chamber, as well as putting PCDs or biological indicators throughout the chamber to find out where the hardest parts are of the chamber to sterilize. So this creates quite a bit of work for you, for the sterilizer, for microbiology lab. It's going to be expensive for you to do the sterilization validation for EO sterilization. And there may be a very long lead time associated with that because they, they got to squeeze it into their normal production runs and there's a big demand for those facilities. So what might be a better option for you rather than going with ethylene oxide sterilization might be to pick um, one of the other two processes that are very common, gamma or E-beam. So if your product doesn't get damaged by gamma or E-beam, that might be a better choice for your, for your product. But if your product isn't compatible with gamma, then you may have no other choices. So that's usually how the primary decisions get made. When do people pick these novel methods? When the other processes don't work. So it's not their first choice because they want to be different. It's because I tried all the other stuff and it doesn't work or materials, my materials that I work with aren't compatible with those other processes. So that's usually how the decision gets made. So now that you know the basic decision-making process, Maybe that'll help you decide what's the best process for you. But um, if you're looking for additional resources, um, there are on that blog page that we provided, we also were talking about one of the things is you have the MDM West show on Anaheim this week. You had uh, sterile packaging day was on Wednesday. We announced um, uh, three new uh, packaging validation um, protocols that we're selling on our website, as well as an ethylene oxide protocol. So we have four brand new protocols that are now available on our website for purchase. So if you need any help in these areas, we have a packaging procedure, we have a um, process validation procedure, we have validation procedures for ethylene oxide, steam, and gamma, which can also be used for the E-beam. And we also have these four detailed protocols they're like between 13 and 20 pages long, depending on which one we're talking about. So if you need these, we have those resources and we have experience doing this. So please contact us. The contact information is found down below in the description. I'll add that after we post the video. And I'll also provide links to the blog that we were talking about. If you think this would be helpful to somebody that you know that's doing packaging validation, uh, sterilization validation, please share the link. That would be very much appreciated. 
And next week, we'll be doing another live session at 12.30 um, Eastern time. I, I think that's what time I'm going to be doing it. If I do it earlier in the day, I'll let you know. Uh, next week, I'm heading on vacation, so I may need to do it earlier in the day to get it done before we head on vacation. And then probably the following week, I'll actually be on vacation and do the live video then. So I hope that helps everybody. I'm looking forward to seeing you next Friday. And if you have any suggestions, please put them down in the comment below. Or if you have criticisms or additional resources you want to recommend, please put them in the comments below. We really appreciate that, and I try to respond to them every week. Have a great weekend, and see you later.